welcome to my YouTube channel in which I share about personal finance and investing. Now today I'll be sharing about the banking stocks in Malaysia, which also happen to be among the largest stocks listed on Bursa Malaysia in terms of their market capitalizations. Now banking stocks tend to give up pretty good dividends and they can also be good stocks to buy during inflationary periods like this when prices are going up. Because when the central bank, like Bank Negara in Malaysia, acts to increase interest rates in order to bring down inflation, while well, since the business of banks relies on lending out money in exchange for interest, when the interest rate is higher, they can charge higher interest, so they will earn higher interest incomes, and this is good for their share price. So in this case, Bank Negara Malaysia has just hiked up the interest rate to 2%. The overnight policy rate has just been increased since the first time after COVID-19 when it was brought to a low of 1.75%. So this can be good for banks so long as the interest rates do not keep increasing to a point where it slows down demand and overall economic activity. So people always ask me like which banking stock should they buy in Malaysia and they are often always comparing between the largest three, Maybank, Public Bank and CIMB Bank. So today I'm going to compare these three banking stocks. Let's go! First, let us look at some of the developments in Malaysia's banking sector. Now, loan growth is expected to improve as the economy recovers from the COVID-19 pandemic. People are starting to go out again, going back to work, spending money in malls and outdoors. So as demand improves, then loan growth should increase as well, and this is beneficial for the banking sector. Now, there should also be a decrease in loan provisions moving forward. Now, previously in 2020, there was the loan moratorium which led to an increase in the loan provisions for banks and in turn reduced their net profits. But since then, the loan moratorium has been lifted up, so there should be a decrease in loan provisions and banks' profits should improve from this year on. Banks are also beneficiary of higher interest rates in 2022, so we saw that recently Bank Negara has raised rates and this allows the banks to charge higher interest rates on their loans. So this can help to improve their net interest margin and improve their overall net profits. Now there is the Chukai Markmore, which is a 33% one-off prosperity tax introduced by the government in November 2021 under the budget 2022. Now this may affect the net income of banks, but its impact should be one-off and not too significant. There is also the risk of potential competition from digital banks in the chase for customer deposits. Before we proceed to compare the performances of the big three banks, let us understand the financial glossary so that you can understand how to evaluate banks' performances. So total operating income equals the net interest income plus non-interest income. Now net interest income just equals the difference between the revenue a bank earns from its interest-bearing assets, which are the loans, and the expenses of its interest-bearing liabilities, which are the deposits. So when a bank takes in deposits, it will have to give out interest. So this is an expense. And when it charges interest on its loans that are given out to borrowers, it earns the interest income, so that is the revenue. So the difference between them is the net interest income, which is ultimately what the bank pockets in for its loans. So we have the net interest income, and also the non-interest income, which is the income derived from other activities that are not related to loans. So it can be like fees from the fund management services. Now net interest margin equals to the net interest income divided by net interest earning assets. So we want these to be as high as possible because this would mean that the banks are making the most use out of their assets to earn income. And then to judge whether banks are efficient at their operations when it comes to managing their expenses, we look at the cost to income ratio, which equals to the operating expense divided by operating income. So we want this to be as low as possible, which would mean that their expenses are being kept as low as possible. Now in this session, we will look at the health of a bank's loan portfolio, which is important given that banks mainly rely on loans to generate their profits. So the loans to deposit ratio equals to total loans divided by total deposits. Now the higher this ratio, it means that the bank is using as much of its deposits as possible to support its loans. But this may not be a good thing if the ratio is too high because in case there is an economic crisis, there is a bank run whereby 
depositors are trying to withdraw their deposits from the banks all at once. If the ratio is too high, the bank may have a possibility whereby it does not have enough liquidity to satisfy those withdrawals, and this can lead to the failure of the bank. Now, there is the loan loss provisions, which are funds set aside to allow for potential uncollected loans due to loan defaults. So some loans may not be recovered because some borrowers may not be able to repay them. So banks may set aside some funds to cater for these potentially defaulted loans in advance before these loans actually default. There is a loan loss coverage ratio, which equals the loan loss provisions divided by gross loan portfolio. So the higher this ratio, it would mean that it is safer because the bank is actually already catering for the potentially defaulted loans in advance. Then there is the gross impaired loans ratio, which equals to gross impaired loans divided by gross loans. Now, gross impaired loans are loans whereby it is unlikely that the loans will be repaid. So it is very likely that they are going to default. So in this case, we want to see the ratio be as low as possible to indicate that the banks are good with their credit risk management. Okay. So this next section shows the regulatory requirements that banks have to satisfy according to the Basel Tree framework. Now, after the global financial crisis in 2008, whereby we saw some banks fail because there is a bank run and people are losing confidence in banks. So there is this thing called Basel Tree regulatory requirements, which requires that banks have sufficient equity capital to ensure that they remain solvent if an economic crisis does happen. So there is this thing called the risk weighting system whereby a bank's assets are being assigned different weights according to their risk level. So say a bank has cash, now this cash is not risky, so it is being assigned a risk weight of 0%. Then a bank has loans, loans are riskier, so the riskier the loan, the higher risk weight will be attached to the loan. So it can go up to 50% or 80% or even higher if the loan is very risky. Now, this risk-weighted assets will be compared to the bank's equity capital. So these are some of the ratios that the bank must satisfy. So the higher the ratio, it means that it, the bank is less at risk of being insolvent in case of an economic crisis because they would have enough equity capital to ensure their solvency. So we want to see these capital ratios be above these requirements. So tier one capital ratio must be at least 6%, common tier one capital ratio, at least 4.5% out of these 6% then tier two capital ratio. So, well, overall, we just want to see these ratios to be high enough in order to ensure that the bank can continue its operations safely. Now let's look at the largest bank in Malaysia by market cap, which is Maybank, established in 1960, listed on Bursa in 1962. It is the largest bank in Malaysia in terms of market cap and also total assets. And Maybank Islamic is the largest Islamic bank in ASEAN and Malaysia in terms of assets. So 107 billion market cap, largest in Malaysia. And this is the share price chart over the past three years. So we can see that from three years ago until now, there has been an increase. And during 2020, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, there had been a dip because of the loan moratorium, which led to a drop in banks' profits. This is the dividend track record of Maybank, pretty consistent over the past few years. Next, we have Public Bank, established in 1966 and listed on Bursa since 1967. It is the second largest by market cap and third largest in Malaysia by total assets. 87 billion market cap. Now, if we look at the price three years ago until now, also there has been an increase. And we saw the dip in 2020 because of the pandemic as well. And this is the dividend chart for public banks across the past few years here, it has been a significant dip. Then we have CIMB, originally established in 1972, 
It was listed on Bursa since 1987. Then you had the new CIMB Group launched as original Universal Bank in September 2006 from the three-way merger of these three banks. So CIMB is the third largest by market cap, 52 billion market cap. This is a share price chart across the past three years. So we see that from three years ago until now, it hasn't really moved much. Then we see that there has been a significant dip during 2020 as well because of the pandemic. And recently, there had been an incident of processing error whereby 20 CIMB customers complained that there were large sums of money deducted from their savings accounts. This led to CIMB taking huge provisions, which reduced their net profits and also led to a dip in their share price. Now this is their dividend history across the years. Okay, now let us look at the performance across the big three banks and actually compare their metrics with each other. So in terms of size and profitability, I've listed Maybank as the largest market cap, then Public Bank, then CIMB Bank. In terms of assets, Maybank is the largest, CIMB second, Public Bank the third. And in terms of net operating income, which shows the revenue they generate from both their lending operations as well as their fund management and other operations. Of course, Maybank has the largest net operating income. And in terms of net interest margin, they're all about the same, with CIMB being slightly higher than the rest. In terms of the cost to income ratio, now Public Bank has the lowest. So we want to see the one with the lowest cost to income ratio, which means that they are most efficient at controlling their operating expenses. So Public Bank is significantly lower than Maybank and CIMB Bank. And I heard that like they give their employees one roll of toilet paper each month in order to cut down on toilet paper expenses. So yeah, that is how good they are at controlling their operating expenses. In terms of profit after tax, you have Maybank being the largest, given that it also has the largest net operating income and the largest asset base. Then between Public Bank and CIMB Bank, we see that although CIMB Bank has higher net operating income, its profit after tax is actually lower than Public Bank because Public Bank was able to control its operating expenses better. So in the end, it still comes up with higher profit after tax. Then this is the EPS, earnings per share for FY financial year 2021. So here I'm just comparing 2021, but later I'll be comparing the metrics over the past five years for these banks. Now if we look at dividends, so the dividend per share for financial year 2021 listed here. So we see that Maybank has the highest dividend payout ratio and the dividend yield is also the highest which is about 6.4%, which is really good actually, especially if you're an investor that likes stable income by earning dividends, then yeah, you would want to pick a stock with a good dividend yield, which is also very financially secure. Now in terms of their loan book, right, we need to assess the health of their loans. So Maybank has the largest loan base compared to the other two. In terms of total deposits, of course, Maybank also has the largest deposits. Then loans to deposit ratio, Public Bank is the highest. Loan loss coverage ratio, Public Bank is also the highest with 360.7%, which is far higher than the other two banks. So it is very well protected. Then gross impaired loans ratio, we can see that Public Bank is having a 0.3% impaired loans ratio. Now this is really low, it means that their loans are very safe. They are very good at picking the safe loans and keeping loan defaults to a minimum. So if you want to assess the quality of loans, well, public bank would be the best. Then CIMB actually has the highest gross impaired loans ratio, so its loans may not be as safe compared to the other two banks there would be more defaults on their loans. In terms of equity capital and ROE, now these are the regulatory ratios that the banks are supposed to have in order to maintain their solvency and say that, yeah, we have enough liquidity to survive any economic crisis or bank run. So all of them 
have sufficiently high capital ratios, well above the regulatory requirements. So they are all safe, although Maybank has higher ratios compared to the other two. In terms of return on equity, which shows how good the bank is at generating returns for shareholders, a public bank has the highest return on equity. This can be also attributed to the fact that they are the best at controlling their expenses. So this helps them to generate good profits for every dollar of equity. Now let us look at the five-year performances of these three banks. So we have the green line being CIMB Bank, blue line being May Bank, and orange line being Public Bank. So for net interest margin, which shows how much profits they can derive from their loans, they are all about the same, except CIMB's five-year average is slightly higher than the rest. They have the cost to income ratio. So CIMB Bank has the highest cost to income ratio across the past five years, its five-year average being more than 50%, so it is the least efficient in managing its costs, while Public Bank has the lowest ratio across the past five years, just above 30%, so it is the most cost-efficient bank. Profit after tax, now Maybank has the largest profits because it also has the largest loan base, and CIMB Bank has the lowest profits after tax, now we see that for all the three banks, they all experienced a significant dip in net profits during 2020 because COVID-19 led to lockdowns and also the loan moratorium. But afterwards, profitability has improved for all the three banks. Then we look at dividends. Maybank has historically been paying out the highest dividends. Dividend payout ratio, Maybank also the highest at close to 80% for its five-year average. In terms of loan growth, Public Bank has been growing its loan base the fastest, although Maybank has the largest loan base. Returns on equity. Now for return on equity, Public Bank has the highest because it is the most profitable bank when it comes to managing its expenses. And then we have CIMB being the least profitable, so it has the lowest return on equity. So we see that for the five-year average, Public Bank ROE above 15%, which is very good. Maybank is still above 10%, while CIMB is below 10%. So CIMB has some work to do when it comes to improving its net profits and return on equity. Now in terms of Taiwan capital ratio, all the three banks are well above the minimum requirement of 6%, with Maybank being the highest at 16.5% in average over the past five years. For total capital ratio, the minimum requirement is 8% and all of them are high above it, with Maybank also being the highest for the 5-year average at 19.4%. So overall, these three banks are quite well capitalized. So now we come to the considerations for each bank, right? Maybank has the largest market capitalization and the largest assets and loan base in Malaysia. It also has highest profits, highest dividend payout ratio, highest dividend yield, highest capitalization ratios. The other cons may be that it has the lowest growth in loans value, but this can be attributed to the fact that its loan base is already the largest, so when you already have a large base, then the growth rate may not be that much. Then it also has the lowest growth in book value of equity per share, but it is not too significant of an impact. Then public bank, it has the lowest cost income ratio, so very good at controlling expenses, very efficient. It has the highest return on equity, which can be attributed to this point as well. It has the highest growth in loan space, highest loans to deposit ratio, highest loan loss coverage ratio, and lowest gross impaired loans ratio. So from here we can see that its loan portfolio is very healthy, very safe compared to the other two banks. However, it has lowest dividend payout ratio and the lowest capitalization ratio. Although this is not that significant because they are all still high above the minimum regulatory requirements. Then we have CIMB Bank. Well, it has the highest net interest margin, although not that much higher than the rest of the two banks. And it has the lowest valuation. So for banks, we use the price to book valuation multiple. It has the lowest one, which is less than one. The rest of them has a valuation multiple of more than one, which is still okay, but we would say that according to this price to book, CIMB is the cheapest. However, it has the lowest profits, 
So in terms of profitability, it has been underperforming compared to the other two banks. It also has the highest cost to income ratio, not that good at controlling its expenses, and also the lowest return on equity. So that's about it for today's analysis. Let me know what are your thoughts. Which banking stock are you looking to buy? Which one do you already have in your portfolio? Or perhaps if you do not like banking stocks, which other kind of stocks are you looking at? Now, if you have found this video helpful, do click on the like button below and also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more financial information like this. Okay, I will see you in my next video. Take care.